center stage. And what some are calling the greatest outpouring of humanity in history, the people in Egypt took to the streets in the millions for five days in a show of no confidence in the Morsi government which they elected and to demand their right to food, shelter, justice, dignity, and freedom from repression. It's interesting that on YouTube there's a 12-year-old um, a who's inter uh, interviewed in uh, the Tahrir Square. Uh, and it, it shows the level of consciousness in the sense of entitlement for the demands that the Egyptian people are raising. Very articulate. He said that the objectives of the revolution of 2011 when Mubarak was overthrown have not yet been achieved. Economic empowerment, freedom and social justice. There are no jobs. Where is the constitution that represents us? For instance, women are half of society, yet there are only seven in the constituent assembly and six are Islamic. How can a TV anchor get 30 million pounds a year while people are still picking through the garbage for food? So that was the mood in these huge demonstrations throughout Egypt. This amazing show of people's power, hugely popular and inspiring revolt, belongs to the people. But even though it was cheered and hailed, the military takeover that followed and deposed uh, Pre President Mohamed Morsi and took control of the Egyptian government did not belong to the people. It was an attempt to contain and undermine them. Under cover of the popular anger, frustration, and disappointment, the general seized on a chance to topple the Brotherhood government and to reinstall the same military, police, judicial, business elements that were in power during Mubarak's reign. The military was aided and abetted by men, many of the secular, liberal, social democratic, religious, and other leaders opposed to Mubarak originally who in an unprincipled manner block with the military against the Brotherhood. This block was led by Mohammed al-Baradi, chairman of the Dostur party and coordinator of the National Salvation Front, which the Egyptian newspaper Al-Ahram called a loose coalition of liberal, leftist, and nationalist parties. So this is what happened on July 3rd, claiming to act on behalf of the people. Uh, the, the Defense Minister General El-Sisi announced that Morsi was deposed and the Constitution suspended. He made the announcement flanked by Egyptians' top Christian and Muslim clerics and political leaders, including El-Baradi and, uh, and a prominent Islamic conservative or Salafi, all of whom endorsed the takeover. Under a roadmap, um, devised by both the civilian and the military groupings. Um, the Constitution was suspended and interim would be government would be headed by the Chief Justice of the Supreme Court with El Baradi as Vice President. Within hours, a fascist suppression of the Brotherhood began. In tantum with the military ouster of Mr. Morrissey, the judicial authorities replaced the attorney general he had appointed with the prosecutor installed by Mubarak, who spent years in office uh, prosecuting Islamists. Morsi was arrested and held incommunicado. The Islamist broadcast outlets were closed. Less than 24 hours after the military interventions, prosecutors from the Al Mubarak regime began is issuing warrants for some 600 uh, Brotherhood leaders and rank and file, including the highest leaders. Uh, and the accusations were incitement to kill demonstrators and opponents of the president. They are also trying to bring Morsi and other Brotherhood leaders on charges from when others broke into a jail and freed them in 2011. Uh, on July 8th, the army fired directly on the Islamic Brotherhood sit-in in front of the Republican Guard headquarters demanding Morsi's release. 55 were killed and about 400 wounded. Let us not forget that this is the same military which ran the government for a year before the 2012 election of Morsi. Then the army failed to enact any meaningful reforms and killed and jailed more 
uh, protesters than the entire 20 than during the entire 29-year emergency degree rule of Mubarak, and there were giant demonstrations to demand that he step down. Now, this does not mean that the huge anger of the masses against the Brotherhood was not justified, because it certainly was. But in this country, we have to really say first that there's a war against Islam here. There's tremendous racism against Islam in all its forms. And for instance, uh, David Brooks, the New York Times col columnist, in a, a wrote that, um, that the Islamists lack the mental equipment to govern. Yeah. So, so this is what we're, we're seeing out there. So we want to make an, an objective analysis of, of the Brotherhood and why there's so much anger against it. But uh, we don't want to fall in with this in any way, shape, or form. This is the Times. Uh, the, the Brotherhood government promised a pluralist, pluralistic government in their election campaign and equality for minorities, but they did not deliver it. They focused on consolidating power rather than representing all Egyptians. They did nothing to reverse the economic nosedive. They did not listen or respond to the people. Morsi's year in office was marked by deterioration in security and services, soaring unemployment, increase in poverty from 40 to 50 percent. He had no clear economic or political priorities. He did not struggle against corruption and poverty. He put all of his economic faith in an IMF loan, which was dangled in front of him, but never delivered. The Brotherhood's foreign policy was the same as Mubarak's. He favored Israel at the expense of the Palestinians and favored the U.S.-backed Syrian rebels against the Syrian government, while increasingly adopting an anti-Iran agenda. This was a bourgeois party, nothing to offer the people, especially a people in the throes of revolution. No wonder the people were enraged and felt that the government had betrayed them. However, Morsi and his party only had the trappings of office at best. They never had control over the military, the security services, the judiciary, or the state bureaucracy. Nor was he able to dismantle the support network that Mubarak and his National Democratic Party cultivated through nearly 30 years in power. The very state apparatus that Morsi was said to head fought him. Even before he was elected, uh, two days before the presidential runoff, the whole parliament was um, de declared uh, not valid by the uh, old remnants of the Mubarak court. And that was certainly a blow to him. The judiciary ruled against uh, anything that he wanted to do again and again and again. Adding insult to injury, the judiciary had declared that um, either declared innocent or overturned the convictions of all senior officers of the Mubarak regime, including Mubarak and his sons. Even low-level security officials with overwhelming evidence against them of killing and torturing protesters were released. This further enraged the people against the Morsi government. A respected judge who stood against Mubarak for many years eventually said that 90% of Egypt's judges were acting to overturn the gains of the revolution. The military also wrested from Morsi's government a deal to keep its supremacy over its own budget without any kind of insight, uh, oversight, with any kind of oversight. The police were refused to direct traffic or keep neighborhoods safe. There were artificial shortages created of petrol and electricity. Uh, this came, the, the, the Brotherhood has charged this, but, but the Brotherhood uh, was a bourgeois party. It, it was not, it had its own agenda. It wanted power for itself and its friends. This is its time in the sun. It was not prepared to mobilize the masses and say, look what, look what the old apparatus is doing, which, which we know is something that you need to do, but they, they were not up to that. And, and even though they complained that they were being undone, uh, they didn't really control much of the media, which ridiculed them. But the Times uh, and the media in the U.S. has come out with a little bit more that, that supports this. Uh, uh, on July 11th, um, the Times said that 
those who own the, uh, the fuel were selling it via black marketers outside the country rather than in the country and creating, creating artificial fuel shortages. And it's interesting to look who was at the demonstrators. In addition to the, the huge masses and workers and peasants who came out for their own demands, um, and uh, one of the writers for Counterparts, Chian Tugal, said that, uh, that some groups in Tahrir, April 6, the revolutionary socialists, openly protested against the military, not just the Brotherhood. Ironically, the main mood among the protesters seemed to be pro-military. There were even groups openly calling for a military intervention. Among the protesters were not only pro-Mubarak civilians, but also thugs. Those are the people that remember the day of the camels during the revolution. Thugs, these are the, the armed elements, uh, and also police without the uniforms. Uh, and Mubarak era security personnel who came to the square in their uniforms. And also, right before uh, the, the military uh, overthrow, the police announced they were, quote, joining the people. Certainly evidence that Mor Morsi was being undone, at least partly by the old remnants of the old government. And this is uh, a, a political science professor at American University. What do you call it when the police, state security, all members of the National Democratic Party, the media all rally to bring down the regime? Is that a revolution? So that's what we're facing with. The bourgeois secular parties were also in on the undoing of the Brotherhood government. They entered into an unprincipled coalition with the military and the old Mubarak uh, party and establishment. We used to call them the opposition. I don't think you could call them the opposition anymore. They also appealed to and cooperated with the imperialists al Baradi, who the Times called Egyptian's most prominent liberal, admitted in a July 4th phone call with the paper that he, quote, worked hard to convince Western powers of the necessity of forcibly ousting President Mohamed Morsi, including on the day of the takeover, he had spoken at length with Secretary of State John Kerry, and excuse me, and Catherine Ashton, the European Union's top foreign policy official. El Baradi also defended the widening arrest of the Muslim Brotherhood allies and the shutdown of the Islamic television network, saying the shuttered television outlets had incited violence. A June 26 counterpunch article by Esim al Mamin, who's, uh, I've read him consistently during the Egyptian struggle and found him very helpful, details how the alliance between the seculars and the so called liberals and the military remnants of the Mubarak regime developed, how the bourgeoisie took advantage of the weakness of the movement, and how both pushed for a military coup. For instance, the so-called secular opposition refused to cooperate with the elected Morsi government. In his year in office, he called all the opposition leaders, especially with the, within the National Salvation Front that included most of the secular opposition, to as many as 10 separate meetings with minimum success. As for the appointments, Morsi's political advisor stated recently that whenever the president asked the secular groups for candidates for the most senior positions in government, including ministers and governors, they refused to engage or send any nominees. Now there's the Fulul. The Fulul is uh, the uh, Egyptian uh, bourgeoisie and remnants of the old Mubarak regime who are still largely in control of the secular apparatus, most of the media, the judiciary, as well as major in industries and influential economic institutions. By mid-2012, they had regrouped some and they, they supported a, a candidate who was uh, from the old regime against Morsi. Uh, when he lost, uh, by the end of 2012, the, the Falul had become part and parcel of the secular opposition groups and a major factor in the instability that had overwhelmed the country. They took advantage of the divisions uh, in the opposition, the lack of a program, the lack of a working class perspective, certainly, and, quote, were able to reinvent themselves and become major players on the side of the secular groups against the Brotherhood and the Islamists. They were embraced by the so-called liberals. 
Uh, Al Barani welcomed all elements of Mubarak's banned National Democratic Party to join his party and the opposition. The uh, one another uh, former presidential candidate, uh, um, the Nasserite, declared that the battle with the Falul now is secondary, as the primary conflict today is with the Muslim Brotherhood and the Islamists. They were embraced by the so-called liberals. Others called on foreign powers like the U.S. to take sides. And still other former candidates openly called on the military to overthrow the elected president and take over. Now, after more than 25 failed attempts in less than six months to mobilize the public against the Brotherhood, the opposition proved to be weak and divided. However, in April, the Tamarun formed. It was a, a new group, Tamarun the Rebellion, led by several revolutionary youth groups and gain momentum, and they, that they declared that they had a new mo movement to uh, oppose Morsi. They announced they would collect 50, 15 million signatures from registered voters demanding early presidential elections and start demonstrations on June 30th, the anniversary of Morsi's inauguration. This caught on, and with, within weeks, uh, many secular groups, many youth, many well-meaning people embraced it, but the Falul did too. The right wing joined the petition campaign and pushed it. At least 14 private satellite channels started a vast propaganda campaign and mobilized efforts promoting the day as a second revolution to clean the country of, of the Brotherhood rule. By mid-June, Tamarun announced the movement had collected more than 15 million signatures, which, which uh, represented a million more people than those who voted for Morsi. Who knows? There was a lot of signatures collected, but one, one author said he signed 16 times. But there, I mean, certainly there's opposition that, that's very real. Uh, but the Islamists declared their own campaign, and they were going to collect 20, signatures, 20 million signatures. Um, but the, the result was uh, a polarization as never before in Egypt. On one side were most of the secular fourth youth groups, Christians, and the Falul, mobilizing for a showdown on the second revolution, uh, on the so-called second revolution to depose Morsi. On the other side were most Islamist groups vowing to defend Morsi's legitimacy and rule by all means. And on June 21st, an, impre an impressive show of force, the, the, the Islamists mobilized about a million of their supporters in a suburb of Cairo, which is a significant amount. So it's not just everyone in the country who opposed Brotherhood rule. It, this is a polarization. Information has come out in the July 11th New York Times that the Falul helped finance and organize the Tamaran efforts to unseat Morsi, involving um, one of Egyptians' richest men, a former judge on the Supreme Constitutional Court, and a legal advisor. Uh, Sawis, who is called a titan of the old regime, donated his, na his national, national offices and political structure of his party, the Free Egyptians, the, the Tamaron. He gave up publicity through his TV network and his major interest in Egypt's pri uh, largest private newspaper and or actually organized a, a music video for the group. Other legal experts helped uh, the Tamaran create its strategy to appeal directly to the military to oust Mr. Morsi. And during the month of, moon, of June, it became apparent that the military intended to use the rebellion as an opportunity to intervene. Uh, Le Monde in July 6th said that on July 23rd, the military had decided, June 23rd, the military had decided upon a coup six days before the massive demonstrations began. So there are many things going on here. Now, what is the military? The military has ruled Egypt for six decades, and Egyptians have much pride in the history of the, the military from the, the era of Nasser, when the, the junior officers kicked out a pro-British monarchy and led a nationalist and anti-imperialist government. Uh, 
and when it fought Israel in the 50s, 60s, and 70s. It's the largest standing army in the Arab world, mostly made up of conscripts and low-ranking officers with little opportunity for advancement. They are close to the people and often the only sources of financial support for extended families. However, for the past 30 years, the officers' corps has been armed and trained by the Pentagon, 1.3 billion a year. The interest of the officers is diametrically opposed to the interest of the rank and file. Uh, Barry Lando, a former producer for 60 Minutes, has written an article called The Egyptian Military Estate Within a State. Um, he says that Egypt, Egypt's uh, top military ranks have enjoyed a pampered existence in sprawling developments where officers are housed in spacious, subsidized condominiums. They enjoy uh, amenities that the average Egyptian has, has not dreamed of. They are notoriously corrupt. Vast swaths of the military land, for instance, were sold by the generals to finance some major urban developments near Cairo with little, if any, accounting. The generals preside over 16 enormous factories that turn out not just weapons, but domestic products from dishwashers to heaters, clothing, doors, stationery, pharmaceuticals, microscopes. The military also built highways, housing, housing developments, hotels, power lines, sewage, bridges, schools, telephone exchanges, often in murky arrangements with civilian companies. The military are Egypt's largest farmers, running a vast network of dairy farms, milk processing facilities, cattle feeding lots, poultry farms, fish farms. They make billions of dollars. Their operations are off the books. There are no published accountings, no oversight. All the nefarious economic affairs are shrouded in secrecy and actually sealed off in the new constitution under state security protections. Now, they fear the Islamists. Uh, they certainly will never forget the Iranian Revolution. Uh, and they, they remember the specter of Iranian generals being publicly executed in the aftermath of, of, of uh, Khomeini's revolution there. And just in case they forget, the, the Shah's tomb is in Cairo. So, yeah, they, they really don't care for anyone that will in any way challenge what they have. And they fear the mass movement even more. Real civilian rule could spell an end to the system of massive military corruption and patronage that has gone on for decades in Egypt. A system that has given the military unimpeded control over an estimated 40% of the Egyptian economy. A state within a state. What about you in, uh, interests, U.S. interests? As of this writing, uh, Washington has said it was, quote, cautiously encouraged, unquote, by the timetable proposed for the new presidential election. He called on the Egyptian army to exercise maximum restraint, while also condemning the explicit brother, brotherhood call to violence that will not uh, suspend its annual $1.3 billion to the military and will go ahead with the planned delivery of four F-16 jets. So the U.S. is backing the coup. They're more comfortable with the generals. I train them. They're on first name basis with their counterparts. But the U.S. has been working both sides of this in order to maintain the influence and relevance in this unprecedented series of huge demonstrations in the most key Arab country, which has really shaken everything up and continues to. There's no real solution in the US, for the U.S. but to try to contain it. And this is why there are splits here. The New York Times opposed the coup, while the Washington Post, which is usually more hawkish than the Times, went so far as to demand a cutoff of U.S. military aid, as did uh, John McCain, who heads the Senate Committee on Armed Services. The overall goals of the U.S. are to contain the struggle, stabilize Egypt in the imperialist orbit, to have a calm border on Israel's southern flank so it can continue attacks on Gaza, the West Bank, and most recently Syria. The U.S. has no permanent allies, only permanent interests. Now the Wall Street Journal 
which can be the bold face of, of predatory capitalist imperialism, not only favored the coup, but in a July 5th editorial said, quote, Egyptians would be lucky if their new ruling generals turned out to be in the mold of Chile's Augusto Pinochet, who took over power amid chaos, but hired free market reformers and, mid and a midwife to transition to democracy. The Milton Friedman group, you know, that yeah. came in and took yeah. control of uh, Chile after, after the coup and really brought devastation on the people there. Of course, they, they don't think about 17 years of terror. The, the Wall Street Journal thinks about profits. Uh, but that's what the Wall Street Journal wants to pro for Egypt. As to what continue and deepen the economic exploitation of the Egyptian workers and rural poor. And in fact, the new prime minister is a former finance minister uh, and founding member of the Social Democratic Party, one of the new so-called opposition parties, Social, the Social Democrats formed two years ago, who criticized both Mubarak and Morsi for failure to move fair enough with the neoliberal reforms and uh, open up the economy and, and uh, do something about those bloated and unaffordable subsidy programs, which are virtually non-existent in Egypt. Uh, and, uh, Mr. Uh, Mr. Biblawi is now in a position to no negotiate with the IMF to bring more austerity for a pending $4.8 billion loan, and the U.S. government, which held back the IMF loan, to the Morsi government is now suddenly making it available to this government of the generals. And meanwhile, some of the most reactionary and anti-democratic regimes in the world, all U.S. clients, are coming to the generals' assistance. Saudi Arabia, Abu Dhabi, and Kuwait have pledged $12 billion in aid to the military government. But things are far from stable in Egypt, and already the agreement between the secular forces and the military is becoming unraveled, as both the Tamarad and the National Salvation Front are opposing some of the um, decrees of the military, saying they were not agreed upon in advance. But the army said it would brook no disruption to what acknowledged would be a difficult transition. The revolutionary forces lost their momentum to the right wing. But this is only temporary, and they will recover. And to be sure, any government that agrees to the U.S. demands for reduced food and fuel subsidies as a precondition for an IMF loans, as this one has singled it's so happy to do, will set off even more huge demonstrations of Egyptian people who have a very strong sense of entitlement and determination for what they deserve. This polarization between Islamists and secular forces, fomented by the military liberal alliance, works against the interest of the Egyptian workers. Islamists are an integral part of Egyptian society and may, they, and may need to be included and reached out to at this point. I think if we were there, we would think about this. We think about it here. The most immediate task on hand in the development of a program that addresses is the development of a program that addresses the needs of all workers and rural poor among the Muslim Brotherhood ranks and among the secular minded and minorities, where all can fight shoulder to shoulder for economic, social, and political justice. The lower ranks of both the army and the Muslim Brotherhood will sympathize with such a movement allowing for a new direction in the country. The Egyptian revolution needs its own leadership, its own program, its own organs of power that speak for the workers and safeguard their interests. This is the way to sweep away the pro-capitalist and pro-imperialist seculars, the pro-capitalist and pro-imperialist Islamists, and the pro-capitalist and pro-imperialist military and ultimately to smash the Egyptian military industrial state. We have every confidence that such leadership and such organs of power can and will arise. Long live the Egyptian revolution.